Welcome back, Dr. Natalie Gonzalez. I'm going to talk about how to relax. I get a lot of questions about this and it's not easy. I'm really struggling with it for myself, so I know it's not easy. And I'm just going to give you some tricks and things to think about. So in this video, we're going to talk about why to relax. We're going to talk about how you can tell if you're getting anywhere for this process. Then we're going to talk about how, how to do it. So let's dive in. Let's just start with why. The whole reason for trying to relax your body, for trying to get yourself in a state of rest and relaxation or rest and restore is because that's how your body maintains its health. When it cannot rest and restore, when it's in this mode of fight, run, or freeze, it's in a state of defense. And when your body is defending itself, it cannot really operate in a healthy way. That's where we get into trouble is when our body is in that state of stress, fight, flight, or freeze, it cannot rest and restore. And that's what we want it to do. So when your body is given the perception by the brain, your brain decides, I'm in danger, I have something to be afraid of, I'm worried about something, I'm frustrated, I'm angry. Any of those emotions coming from your brain tell your body to be in this state of stress, which is the fight, flight, or freeze mode. We want to tell your body that all is well, because when your brain gets that message, it sends that message all the way down the vagus nerve, coming down in two parts from both sides of the brain, down the neck, the torso, the abdomen, and pelvis. And those two branches of the vagus nerve send messages and little tiny branches, all the different organs and parts of the body that need to know, are we on alert right now or are we in rest and restore mode? So we wanna get your brain to be able to tell your body that it's okay to sit back and rest and restore and repair things and just make it so that your body isn't aging quite so fast. This will also have a major impact on sleep for rest and restore activities that your body needs to do. So we not only want to relax so that you can fall asleep, we want to relax so that your body can perform these processes during sleep. If you are not sleeping well, your body is aging faster because it's not getting the chance to rest and restore. Very commonly in my practice, I find that people think that they are relaxed because they act relaxed on the outside. And that's a very good start to act that way, but it's not the whole picture. And sometimes we can fake everybody on the outside and we can have a very calm demeanor and people will say, wow, that person looks so relaxed. I wish I could be like that. And when I start to interview that person, it's very clear very early that they are not really relaxed, that they've buried some of that, those frustrations and those, those really intense emotions of fear and worry and anger deep inside their body and their body is not resting and it's not restoring. And so what I teach people a lot of times is to be able to look for those signs for yourself that tell you whether your body is in a rest and restore mode or whether it's on high alert. And sometimes it's just getting somebody to recognize what their barometer is. And by that I mean, some people, their barometer is their gut. Their barometer is their diarrhea or their constipation, or maybe their gut is just churning all the time, or maybe they have abdominal gas and, and other cramping pain when they're under stress and they can't relax. Another barometer for many people are headaches. Another one would be increased pain, wherever their pain is normally they are having increased pain 
because they're stressed and stress has a way of magnifying pain. And so for everybody, I have them look for that barometer. Often it's just heart rate. And that's why some of the heart rate monitors are really helpful because we know that it's an increased heart rate. But some people won't have a health monitor of any sort, but they can tell that their heart is beating really heavy. They can tell they have a really pounding heart, or they can tell that they're breathing short and shallow. That would be another barometer. Another barometer, this is an interesting one. My sister had this when we were growing up. She was often taking deep sighs when she was stressed. And it has to do with the metabolism of the body and the acid-base balance that causes uh, someone to breathe uh, more deeply, more often, because their body needs that extra oxygen. So it's forcing them to do that. But that can happen in very stressed people. So everybody's barometer is different. I want you to be looking for that for you so that you know better how to tell whether you're actually relaxed or not. Uh, another really common one is temporal mandibular joint pain. So that's this jaw pain here that people get when they're clenching their teeth at night. It's really become popular to do Botox injections for the jaw to relax that muscle for people who are clenching their teeth at night. I think that's pretty drastic to be doing Botox injections for that because it really isn't addressing the reason for the teeth clenching, which is the stress. Just keep in mind, you know, when you're getting injections to help you relax muscles, you're not really addressing the problem. And you are also taking your barometer away a little bit. So let's go on to how to relax, what we can actually do to help us relax. Often, it's as simple as breathing. I really like breathing because it massages that vagus nerve in and out with the breath. It presses on that nerve in the center of your body that goes down through it, and it helps tone that nerve down so that it's more in this rest and restore mode. And it is very simple, very easy to do breathing exercises for that. I have a couple of videos for it, but anything that is a deep breathing type of exercise will do that. And it doesn't have to be anything special. There are acupuncture and acupressure points that you can access when you need to relax. You can download a PDF for that and it will help you to determine some of the points that you could just access when you're at work and nobody really has to know. That's like breathing. Nobody really has to know that you're doing it. You're, everybody breathes. That's why I think breathing is so good for this. But you know, even some of these acupressure points are really easy to access to tone that uh, vagus nerve down. So those are a couple of really simple ones. Another one is to just stop feeding the problems. Feeding the problem with stimulants is what I'm talking about. So stimulants might be excess caffeine. It could be coffee, tea, anything with caffeine. There are a lot of things with caffeine that we don't recognize and a lot of stimulants too in our foods that we don't necessarily recognize. Both peppermint and cinnamon can be highly stimulating for some people. And I know I've had a number of sleepless nights just because I had something with those things in it before bed. Another common one would be dark chocolate. It has xanthine in it, which is very similar to caffeine. It's a related compound and it can keep people awake all night if they have it as a dessert in the evening. So stimulants in terms of foods, but also stimulants in terms of activities. For example, exercising too close to bedtime, watching the news at night can be very, doing their taxes at night or doing, you know, going through their finances at night before they're going to bed. Those are not really good evening activities. They, they're very stimulating. Um, reading a really great book. Reading a really great book maybe should wait till the weekend, not like right before bed.